When you begin to major in a minor, that's the first problem of life. Sometimes you just look at what is happening around you and you'll be like, are people really taking time out to think of the way out of the shambles they've gotten themselves into? And it becomes more painful when this rancor is between two countries that are actually neighbors. The continent of Africa is going through a whole lot of dismembering, if you understand what I'm trying to say. The continent of Africa is going through a whole lot of challenges that you will now begin to ask yourself this question. Are the countries within the continent of Africa really thinking right? Just for them to organize a simple thing as football match in between themselves, this is what you get to see. Nigeria to set of useless countries. Now we are not nowhere. We are nowhere. From the videos you've just seen, it's just one country dishonoring the other, and because they do not have technically more important issues to handle, they are busy paying each other back according to the coin of foolhardiness. Nigeria versus Ghana the closest neighbor of all ages. The rancor did not just start now. It started all the way from the 1980s when somebody that was in power decided to ask Ghana must go. When that Ghana must go back, it's actually what? Recalling the event that happened between Nigeria and Ghana when the people of, let me not say the people, when the particular rulership in Nigeria, ask the Ghanaian people to what to Zeba for meaning what to evaporate to leave the country. This actually got Ghanaians of God and they were not happy about it. But like a miracle in disguise, they went back to the I wanted to say the continent, they went back to their country and all of a sudden they started putting effort to make their country great and better. Now Ghana is better and bigger. But you will not believe this. It was Ghana must go before, but presently what we are seeing is Niger must pack. Nigerians must go out of Ghana. That should send us some important lesson. Never underestimate whoever you are seeing that is going through challenges presently. But the world of football is supposed to be a free place where everybody comes to play with an open-minded, open-minded feeling the gap. You know, me and English, we used to struggle a lot. It, it was wrong. Ghanaians treated Nigerian footballers like monkeys up and down the plane. As if they were just hopping from one mango leaf to the other. And Nigerians that are so smart that we never take rubbish for an answer. They play them back in their own coin. Making sure that Ghanaians have a very good landing place in 
the airport of Nigeria. But when it was time for them to practice for the game of football, see what happened. Our final, they took the light. <laughs> Nigerians, you can be stupid when you want to deal with anybody. That is why I want to tell us this story. I have three important guests with me in this studio. One of them happened to be a renowned psychologist that would decipher the undoing news. One of them happened to be hot pepper, their mama. She will give it back to back to them on whatever point she sees that is sensational. And the third man is so full of historical lingualum to us. He knows so much that by the time he begins to break it into pieces, you will understand the concept of by the one. Now, I bring to you my beautiful guest in the house, Mr. Columbus, Madame Deborah, and our own sweet sensational therapeutic. India and by name. Okay, so the discussion is left open for you to view. What would you say about this unnecessary drama between Ghana and Nigeria? Well, it, I think the current happening is laughable. I just feel like laughing. You know, when I watched the video, I felt, is this called for? Because we're talking about brothers and sisters here. Nigeria, Ghana, they are brothers and sisters. So I think they can do better than this. I don't know what to call it. You know, I think uh, they should think of a better way of relating with themselves better. Because the truth be told, if they don't treat themselves well, they will keep losing important things that they needed to gain from each other. Because historically, they have strong diplomatic ties between themselves. So I, I don't, I see no reasons why they should be this rancor, uh, pay back time as it were, or what have you. Whatever must have happened in the past should be a bygone. I understand that Nigeria has done some things in the past that really pained the Ghanaians. And if the, the young ones who must have read history are coming to act now, we actually won't want to blame them. But then, Wisdom demands that we we'll let the past go. Because if you open a fight between the past and the present, you will lose the future. So in order for us to gain the future, I think we should let go of the past. I understand that what the Shagarit government did in 1983 was uncalled for. Over 700,000 Ghanaians were sent out, you know, the, it, there was no due process for the declaration. That was not fair. And if you look at the way Ghana is going about it, you want to agree that it's a playback time. But I want to say that Ghana's deportation of Nigeria as a new chapter of revenge should come to an end. And the unnecessary maltreatment of the football team. If you watch that video, you want to agree that it was a deliberate act. How can you ask footballers to be jumping? You know, while coming down from the, you know, from the plane. I think there should be an honor. That was an act of disrespect. And you want to agree that it was a deliberate act. And when they came to Nigeria, you saw the playback time. Nigerians have to off the light. I say we will show na pepe. For how long are we going to keep doing this childish thing? You do me, I do you. You do me, I do you. It's going to affect us or keep affecting us. I'm talking of the two brothers here now, Ghana and Nigeria. It's going to be affecting us economically, socially, 
I will not go forward. So what we should be thinking of, when I mean we, I'm referring to both Ghanaians and Nigerians, is how do we get better roads? How do we get employment for the young people? How do we leverage on poverty and make life better for each other so that Nigerians can easily go to Ghana, Ghanaians can easily come, or Ghanaians can easily come to Nigeria, and then we treat each other as the brothers and sisters that we have. So my appeal is, let this unnecessary rank cause stop, and let's begin to think for a way of a better tomorrow. That's my take, and I know you agree with me. Thank you. Who has reached way forward? Can you imagine embarrassing ourselves? Payback. I don't understand. Like, one good talk deserves another. So, why will Nigerians go to Ghana and then you give them battery to and then you expect them? Anyway, Nigeria know they carry last, even though I'm not in support of <laughs> Nigeria, my country. They're off lights. Swale, but it's not fair. It's not fair. Please, let's treat ourselves as brothers and sisters, irrespective of what happened in 1983. At least, at least, let's think of the way forward. Echo us. Way forward is what we want. Unemployment is on a high rate. Poverty is on a high rate. Let's think of a way forward. What message are we sending to the Europeans? What do you expect them to think of us if we move if we continue this way, <laughs> uh, sometimes I just feel like laughing at Nigerians because even with all the so much troubles we're facing in this country, all we think of is how to pay Ghana back what they did to us. I don't understand. With the kidnapping and killings and bad governance, police brutality and all of that, what Nigeria thought most important to them was to off lights for because Ghana has treated them bad and they think it's actually right to pay them back. I feel two wrong can never make a right. So as Africans, we need to stand together. We need to, to be united. We need to come together as Africans. If as Africans we're not united, what do we expect? the Europeans, the Americans, to, to feel about us. And take, for example, we are invaded by either the Europeans or the Americans, and we are, not, we are not united. How do we fight back? How do we help ourselves? So Ghana, Nigeria, we are one. And this drama, this thing going on between Ghana and Nigeria is not funny at all. Musicians, um, footballers uh, and so on and it's just it's just somehow so I feel Ghana and Nigeria we are one we should be united we should come together as one we are Africans we are blacks we have that beauty in us we should bring out that beauty as brothers let's unite ourselves together let's work hand in hand to make Africa a great continent please this payback and all that is uncalled for and I feel is of no use but Nigeria shall <laughs> all of us not clown for the country on the norm. So <laughs> you do me, I do you. <laughs> Everybody just be clown for the country. Who die for Nigeria out of depression? That person not know himself. So but the thing is, let's just let's just unite ourselves. Let's come together and, and work together. And we will see the beauty out of it. So my advice to, to us as blacks, this fight, this this train of tantrums between ourselves, we should try to end it. We should try to, to live above it. Let's live above our pains. Whatever that has happened in the past is in the past. What are we trying to teach our upcoming generation? Meaning, the worst, the upcoming generation, they go worst past us. So, I beg, let's just try and what? And unite ourselves now, before it's too late, before this whole thing gets out of hand. Let's just see, take for example what is happening in uh, Ukraine and Russia now. Ah, Nigeria and Ghana, they come, they fight. It go brutal. People go die plenty. We don't even need bomb. Hand to hand now, battle. Everybody go die. So let's, let's drop the past behind us and 
Let's look towards the future. Let's look at the bright future ahead of us. Let's work together as one, as one black nation, as one black Africans that we are. And let's bring out that beauty in us. Thank you. When you begin to major in a minor, that's the first problem of life. <laughs> okay, with all that has been said so far today, I can't stop but uh, just laughing at the situation. It is very, very pathetic when people begin to major in minor or when a country or two set of countries are majoring in minor, when the whole world is going through a whole lot of challenges that are more important that should take our attention, is only to be acting and reacting against each other that Nigeria and Ghana is deciding on. It's so, 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 so funny and issue. And let me tell you, it is high time they drop this attitude of ineptitude. Hmm, also in Bombay. Ineptitude in the sense that what we are looking at today is not just what is happening now. It has started happening. You people, Nigeria and Ghana, they quarrel over jollof rice. There is nothing I have not seen. They quarrel over jollof rice that Niger- Niger jollof is better than Ghana jollof. And Ghana also has started arguing. Ghana jollof. Is that the main thing that will transform the continent of Africa? And come to think of it, Nigeria, the giant of Africa, is short. We even have the time to say, okay, Wait, when it is now their training period, we'll go and off. <laughs> I, I think the person that went to off the lights of that stadium, Abuja Stadium, that person deserves international award of being on serious because of all the serious issues happening in Nigeria, kidnappings, uh, even electricity has not been stable in Nigeria, I must confess. Uh, for some weeks now, it has been total blackout that they will just on the light as if they are flashing the touch light and remove it you know but to now add insult to injury you have international players coming in and we have to do a payback to them i find it funny but i hope that uh, everybody will just get serious about serious matter within the continent so that we can move the continent forward i must give kudos to ghana ghana is really trying in a whole lot because they have stopped most of the, what is it called, uh, these foreign countries that are always taking them as where they can get raw materials. They've told them that, no, you have to come and cite your companies within Ghana. So if Ghana is taking such logical steps, I expect Nigeria, who happens to be the giant of Africa, to also be thinking of something better than that. Instead of preparing a budget or not to go on off light. <laughs> Nigeria, we are not stupid, though, but this action is very stupidly funny. And for Ghanaians, for you to go and bring that kind of rickety, is this the case that we call that one, or meta case, for our own footballer to be jumping, <laughs> to be jumping from the plate. I think you Ghanaians, you are overstepping your boundary. <laughs> Do we look like monkeys? Like are bringing such stuff for. But I feel the two countries should just take it like something to laugh over and let us come together and work on more economically sensitive and reproductive policies that will change the course of nature instead of just fooling around with this immature character. So with that being said, I want to say Ghana, Nigeria, we are one and we cannot be disturbed by this. I want to say a big thank you for following up on this uh, channel. In case you are new to this channel, please give us thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel so that you can see more wonderful things happening across the globe. And in case you know any youth out there, whether in Ghana or in Nigeria, in short, I want to pay attention to Ghana now. If you know any youth in Ghana, or in Nigeria that are going through one challenge or the other and they need to be supported in one way or the other to be trained in numerous craft kindly reach out to us on the number displaying below so that we can put a better smile on the faces of our citizens in Africa that are going through challenges instead of bringing rickety staircase <laughs> or putting off the lights in the training session so 
I hope we all learn from the pastor that we stand up as one beautiful Africans, which we really are. So from all of us at Central's vlog, we say thank you and bye-bye.